The 6.5 is on the road in Barcelona at MWC 2024. We are here in the Lenovo booth, and this show is on fire, Dan. I mean, the excitement at the show, all of the people in the hall, we could barely get through hall three yesterday. Yeah, this place has been pretty wall to wall. Uh, just trying to even get in this morning, line wrapped around the building. It's just really good to see the energy is back. This industry is so critical to the world. I mean, keeping people connected. I don't think in the in the end that we think about a lot of these new innovations, you know, whether it's virtual reality, connected cars, cloud and data center, and then of course the applications that we run every day in our businesses and in our personal lives, there's so much dependency on the network. It's just, it's everywhere. Yeah, Dan, and the criticality of all these pieces coming together, all the way from the core network to the edge device and everything in between, really makes, makes an impact. And as you sprinkle some AI dust on the whole ecosystem, magic does happen. I can't, I can't help but envision a little AI magic pixie <laughs> dust being dropped over everything. But that's kind of what's going on right now. I mean, look, there is a lot of very real AI, and over the last, you know, multiple decades, AI has been you know, part of the story, but really it's just risen into the conscious of the world, you know, with the advent of large language models. And now we're seeing, you know, here at an event like this, that there's very practical and pragmatic applications for AI, like more sustainability and more efficiency. And then of course, some of the really cool stuff that you can do on these devices, yeah. and it's it's getting really exciting. It is, and Danny, we always say the grand purifier on the 6.5 is when we have analysts, uh, system providers, solution providers, and a customer on at the same time. Yeah. And here we have a, a, the trifecta, analysts, vendor, and a customer. Maran from uh, Rakuten, great to see you. And Dominique with Lenovo, great to see you. Welcome to 6.5. Thank you. Thank you. It's nice to see you guys. Absolutely. So, uh, Maran, you know, there's this growing collaboration that's taking place here between Rakuten and Lenovo um, around AI. Uh, with Rakuten Symphony. Can you, you know, just give us a little bit of an, an overview of the collaboration and the partnership that's going on and how AI is being uh, sprinkled, as we said, how it's being layered into this relationship? Sure, of course. I think, uh, uh, first of all, uh, the NOAA has been a great partner with Rakuten. We know we depend on collaboration and ecosystem to make the customer experience far better. And AI is actually a big part of that as well. You know, you, you saw our announcement this morning about uh, partnering with OpenAI. We're building a lot of capability around AI to support uh, how customers' experiences can change. If you think about operators' expenses around providing service, five to seven times OPEX cost as opposed to CAPEX. So the main problem to solve is really operations. And AI really a game changer for reducing operational cost for telco operators. And we want that uh, to go entirely down the stack. So we actually collaborate with Lenovo for the orchestration and automation of platforms at the edge with zero touch to post deployment, including lifecycle operations, upgrade and, uh, uh, and updates, all that could be AI driven. The other aspect of AI that is important is the fact that you can actually use AI to uh, understand customers and customers' behavior and, and make that experience better and as such sell new services, new products and increase your revenue uh, from the operator's point of view. Right. So I, I think we see AI roles on both sides and the Lenovo uh, partnership is a big part of uh, bringing that AI all the way down to the stack to the point that the infrastructure is managed, services are managed and services are delivered. It's a great explanation. So yeah, we're quite excited. I think um, we're certainly contributing also to this uh, back to normal MWC here in Barcelona, making right. sure yes. there's a lot of buzz. So we have uh, uh, over 20 new solutions, new use case, and uh, certainly top of that with the partnership we have with Rakuten is certainly top of those, those lists here because it's also a very short term, but also long term and very strategic alignment. So very excited about that. Uh, you mentioned the network. I think uh, we're back to the network is the product again. And we probably forgot that in the co post COVID years, and a lot of solutions that we have been talking together that we've also been working on together really enable the network from the teleco perspective. And to the AI sprinkle dust, uh, you know, the angel dust uh, perspective, we, we tend to forget that the, the telecoms 
have access to a massive data lake, not only for their own internal use, but also how they can leverage data lakes, in fact, for external and enterprise SMB, different end customers out there. And really, uh, AI, uh, but also edge AI, is really that next virtual frontier where you can extend those data lakes and transform that into different services. So Miran was referring to more the internal operations of an, op uh, of an operator, of a telecom operator, where we can certainly find optimum positions, you know, we can optimize telco cloud, we can optimize container services, we can optimize radio deployments, we can optimize radio connections, 5G connections, and you know, throughput for 5G among other things. But also from an enterprise resale perspective, you know, the telecoms have access to some fantastic gold mine, not even gold dust or fairy dust, but certainly a gold mine of data lakes here that they can absolutely leverage further. You know, I'm really struck with the words that you use, Dominique. 15 years ago, the conversation was very different and the architecture of carriers and carrier CSPs were, were, were quite different. The language that you're using is more like a, a modern private cloud uh, in a way, and it just strikes me how far we, we've come as an industry. There's a lot of competition out there, and, and I'm curious, what is it that distinguishes Lenovo in, in this AI space uh, for CSPs? And we're going to ask you this same hard question after he's done, so. <laughs> so we, we believe in AI for all. Um, if anything that we've learned in the last 12 months from you know, Barcelona last year to Barcelona today is that I think everybody was surprised by the uh, speed at which large language model was adopted. So shrink-wrapped, pre-trained models will see absolutely a really rapid acceleration and certainly a faster adoption. But if you can bring that kind of application, if I can call AI or machine learning an application, but if you can run it in fact on a workstation, on a laptop, on a smartphone, and use you know, public LMs or public models or even private models or even enterprise class models, all of a sudden a whole new range of applications and benefits that can, can be really be unleashed. So what we've done together is that we believe that by combining Rakuten software with our own portfolio, we can really simplify. So the key word that we've always been talking about is making it as simple as possible. Right. Because the complexity will be in those models, the complexity will be in that data management, in that data capture, in the data uh, you know, analysis and that data manipulation. So if we can simplify with you know, a Rakuten software and our complete solution, all across from core data center, from high cluster, high availability cluster to the far edge, and then really make sure that across telco cloud, hyper-converged solutions, you know, um, storage clouds, uh, telco uh, cloud storage, for instance, and can bring that and enable them that uh, fairy dust, then all of a sudden we are really in a different space. Yeah, it's interesting even um, some of the research we've done when you're talking about zero touch provisioning, that didn't start in the server, that started on the client computing on, on the PC side and actually made its way over to uh, server technology. So Manon, what about you? What, what, what distinguishes you from your competitors in, in this space? You know, uh, it's a great question. I think Brad uh, 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 is has an interesting perspective in this. First of all, uh, the group uh, includes RMI, which is an operator. Uh, with millions of subscribers uh, uh, and uh, deployed probably the first end-to-end uh, -end 5G containerized network in the world. And we're now unleashing AI on, on that. We're going to create models based on that deployment with the actual live data of a live network and use those models to do a lot of uh, uh, kind of enhanced um, uh, offerings that are AI driven. Around OSS, BSS for example, to be able, let's say you, you, you uh, want to do a slice for a specific customer, you can ask the AI engine, okay, where can I carve this slice? And that would save hours and days from uh, getting the delivery of the service faster. A slice that's high bandwidth, low latency. That's right. Okay. And also based on the customer's requirements. So the customer is asking you, I'm going to host this Azure application, uh, instead of doing six months of planning and, and figure out, 
where the science should be placed. You can ask right. the AI, I'm going to provide this. And based on the existing data and what we've been able to deliver, you can get a reasonably accurate answer in a much shorter time. So both time to market and also post-deployment operational benefits are the highly high differentiator of any provider. And since Symphony Stack is generally available, we actually announced that we are going to make all our RAN software open. So anyone can come and get the RAN software and the documentation that announced this, this morning or yesterday. So all the, uh, the ecosystem partners could build value-added services on top of the connectivity and all AI managed. So they'll also get benefit. The ecosystem partner would get. Yeah, it's fascinating the openness to the ecosystem. Like you're actually providing your technology to also com competitive carriers. So everyone. I got it. It's great. It's like the orchestration of a beautiful symphony. <laughs> there we go, Dan. Oh, there we go. Dan always comes up with one of them. So <laughs> there we go. Yes. Well, I just I hear the music, and the music needs to play. It needs an ecosystem. It needs a combination of par of partners. And what I understand is you're launching joint solutions and you're coming to market together. And so, you know, I always say collaboration is all about, you know, moving faster, you know, exponential value, and of course solving customer problems. Yeah. Moran, I'd love to kind of get your take on the problems that you think you're jointly solving to, by working together, Lenovo and Rakuten Symphony, and, and kind of what are the, some of the solutions that this is is yielding, like as you're here at the event, you're talking to customers, to, you're maybe doing some of this together. What are the solutions you're bringing jointly? That's a great question. I, I think uh, a lot of people ask the question, so, so, so what is the sense of this partnership? Otherwise, yeah. you have a hardware provider, you're putting your stack on top of it. Right. The, the thing that is um, not so uh, clear sometimes to, uh, to people is that the deployments are complex, especially for edge use cases and so on. And, there's a lot of things from the piece of hardware, the drivers to stack, to cloud, to network functions, to how it's deployed that has to be tested. Customers see a lot of value when partners join together, like us and Lenovo, to build a focused solution for the edge, for example, that we have done. That already pre-tested, we have a, a, a profile that explains how to deploy it. Uh, they get confidence that it's going to work. They get confidence that it'll be supportable it actually adds value to customer's experience. Uh, it's more than just, oh, oh, we know each other and we can work on each other. It's, it's, we like solution-based tighter integration and Lenovo has been a great partner to that. I would say two things. Um, number one, we have to do this at scale. I mean, the name of the game for a telco is really to do this at profitable scale. So it's not about deploying 50 sites, it's about deploying 10,000 sites. Can we make that efficient? Um, can we do zero touch provisioning, but can we deploy all of these endpoints, or even regional points, as effectively as possible, knowing that those equipment needs to stay in those networks for a very long time, so there's no chance of failure. You cannot tolerate any failure over there. So the ability to do this at scale is really critical, I think, in the discussions and the partnerships and the solutions and the validations that we've done together. Number two for me, which is even more important, strategically important, is that when we talk EI, when we talk the, the various models, there is also a, a very heavy cost associated with EI. Running EI costs electricity, you know, generates green gas. There's, with the uh, op telecom operators having net zero targets, very tight net zero targets, science-based targets for net zero in the 2030, 2040, so they have really a big challenge in deploying all of this, but at the same time also reducing the footprint. So all the solutions that we are also working together and building together have also sustainability, having reducing the energy consumption, uh, really in mind and really as one of the targets, as, as a fringe benefit really, but for me it's becoming really central, probably more central in the decision criteria for the end customers. So both of your companies, you've done a lot of work together in the past to get to, to where we are today with this, with this announcement. Can you give some sort of an idea of what the future holds? And not necessarily, you don't, I'm not asking you to pre-announce what the two of you are doing together, but you're certainly welcome to do that if you'd like. <laughs> uh, but this is mostly about a macro, a telecommunications. What are the, where do you see this evolving over the next uh, few years? Maybe Dominic, we'll, we'll start with you. So we believe um, that by building really large scale telco cloud, including compute and storage and other functions like hyperconverge, et cetera, 
really can enable that next generation type of applications. So when we think portable LLM models, portable models, shrink wrap models, pre-trained models, the ability to deploy this both from a network operations perspective, from the telco inside, if you want, but also as a resale model, addressing different verticals in the enterprises in different domain, really. You know, by building that cloud together, we simplify really at least the infrastructure layer. And so the complexity still resides, of course, at the data and the model layer, and being able to provide and deliver that, I think, is really what we work on for the next uh, couple of months, couple of years. Yeah, so scale and even more flexibility. Scale and flexibility with taking and compute, simplicity. Getting the connectivity and the compute even closer together. Like a symphony. Exactly, Orchestration there we go. symphony. Exactly. <laughs> Orchestrating symphony. Now, I think I want to kind of highlight a little bit uh, more what Dominic said. It, uh, it, it, we are um, looking at a crossroad for telecom operators. Uh, they have issues with um, um, capturing um, customer attention, in increasing ARPU, uh, getting to beyond connectivity right. and offering services. They have issues with uh, infrastructure costs and power, for example. Uh, we're going to try to work together to try to solve a variety of these problems, service delivery automation, right. AI-based power management. All those things require collaboration with the infrastructure provider. And doing it at scale, not as one. So, so be able to, for example, uh, we have AI models even now that we can manage the power consumption when the network is not utilized. So all of these things as, as a whole would have to work together, get tested together, and offered together. I think that it, that's why we feel uh, our relationship is important, and we will continue to work to enhance the value to the end customer by offering these kinds of services on top of the infrastructure. Well, and your architecture certainly lends itself to the flexibility to be able to do all those things, and I know that if we're able to run LLMs on a smartphone and a PC, we can certainly run them on the edge, and even in, in, the, in the larger data centers, and, probably bigger models than smartphones, uh, but still, it'd be interesting to see if the Symphony can orchestrate even the AI that's going on in the edge with the uh, data center, the cloud model that you're putting together. Yeah, it's, uh, it's very exciting to watch how this all plays out. Um, Dominique and Miran, I want to thank you so much for joining us here on the 6.5, taking a little time out of your very busy MWC schedule and have a wonderful event. And let's talk soon. I look forward to seeing how this kind of all comes together. Hope so. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you both. You. Thank you so much. All right, everybody, hit that subscribe button. Join us for all of our coverage here at MWC 2024 here in Barcelona. We're here in the Lenovo booth in Hall 3. It's going on here this year at MWC. We'll see you all back again really soon. But for this show, bye-bye now.